Today, we're going to be talking about America. That's right. Well, it is the 4th of July after all. Might as well make an episode talking about how awesome my home country really, really is. If you don't believe me, stay tuned for more. Hey guys, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about America. We're celebrating the 4th of July. That's right. Well, you guys already know I'm the guy that lives in Mexico and all that good stuff. And I talk about crypto. I talk to my horse. I talk about living in Mexico. I talk about a lot of things. But today, we're going to be talking about the USA. Sure, you know that on this channel, we talk about, you know, the politics, the dollar, you know, a lot of things that, you know, to the untrained eye might make you think that I don't like America, but I do. I love the US of A, all right? Give me a fucking break. This is the land where I was fucking born, all right? Even though my parents were Cuban and they came from Cuba, I mean, where else are they gonna come from? Actually, it'd be funny if they were from somewhere. They came, all right, sorry. Stay on topic, brother. Anyways, so yeah, I mean, my parents were Cuban. I was born in Miami, but I'm 100% American. And I, I mean, I'm always gonna be American, no matter what. So today I decided to make a 4th of July episode because a year ago, I had just moved to Mexico and it was my first ever 4th of July that I celebrated outside of the US. And boy, was it weird. It was really, really weird because again, the 4th of July here is just another, another Thursday. I think it was Wednesday last year, whatever. The point is, it was just another day. And it wasn't until September 16th that we celebrated Mexican Independence Day that I was like, oh, oh yeah, I forgot about these things. But anyways, as you guys already know, the 4th of July is a day to celebrate America. You know, and we all celebrate America in a completely different way. You know, being, you know, immigrants or being you know, 100% American, whatever that means. <laughs> you know, we all celebrate it our own way. Some of us watch baseball, some of, us, some of us throw the football around, some of us throw fireworks, some of us lose some fingers while we're doing it, some of us have barbecues, some of us eat watermelon, some of us don't. By the way, I love fucking watermelon. My dad used to fucking love that shit. I'm just trying to make, you know, see if I can get you guys a fucking laugh out there. Anyways, we also eat a lot of fucking mayonnaise. Well, they eat a lot of mayonnaise out here in Mexico, too. Anyways, all right, enough with the double entendres. You know, the point is that... There was, <laughs> the point is that we're here to talk about, you know, America. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I just literally decided to make this episode. I had no script, nothing to talk about. But what I'm going to just talk about is whatever the hell comes to mind. So, right off the bat, I'm going to talk about what, what I miss about the United States, okay? Because, granted, you know, I've been living abroad over a year now. Um, and even though I go home to visit from time to time, um, sometimes when I gotta renew my visa, I don't go back to Miami. And the thing is, again, when you're going back to Miami, sure, it's America, but it's not America. Again, you know, Miami really, you know, it just closely resembles here more than anything else. But still, Miami is a great example of what it makes what makes America great and what's what makes America so awesome and unique. The fact that there are so many cities and so many places around the US that are just uniquely them. Like New Orleans or Los Angeles or New York City or Boston or Chicago or Detroit, Seattle, you name it. There's a Denver. You know, we can go on and on and on. And each and every one of these cities and each and every one of these places in America, in the U.S. of A, is completely different and has their own culture and their own everything. Um, I remember when I first moved to Seattle, I was like such a culture shock for me. It was so intense. It was so insane. It's, it, again, you know, just coming to Mexico was less of a culture shock than when I moved to Seattle. And as I traveled all across the US, I got to really see all kinds of different places, everywhere from Nashville to Kansas City to everywhere in between and on the coast and you name it, I've been everywhere. And um, yeah, you know, I mean, America, the United States of America is fucking amazing. I really do, you know, miss a lot of things about it. You know, one of the things that I miss about it the most is, I'm not gonna lie to you, In-N-Out burgers, hamburgers, really good pizza, the food. If there's anything I miss from home, is the food. Basically, that's it. I can't, I mean, I don't know what else. Now, I know it sounds crazy, but when I was in the US, I remember talking, you know, knowing many immigrants and 
all they could ever say, I mean, sure, they missed certain things. Oh, I missed the mountains, or I missed the beach, or I missed whatever the fuck, you know? But the main thing that most people, you know, if you, could take, if you take a poll right now, the one thing that most people miss when they're away from home, especially if you're an immigrant, is the food. Okay, and again, you know, just think about it when you, if you're in the U.S. and you, you know, let's say you were born in Boston and you live in L.A., you know, sometimes it's as, you know, simple as regional, you know, where, you know, if you're, again, from Boston and you're in L.A., there's, a, there's certain things you're just not going to get in L.A., no matter what, and vice versa. So imagine when you're, you know, from in another country. So, you know, right now I'm in Mexico and the, the food out here is phenomenal, but you know what? I can't get an authentic New York slice. You know what? I can't get a really good burger made American style. You know, I, I just, you know, there's just a bunch of things I just can't get. You know, if all of a sudden I have a, a, a you know, I want to have a corned beef sandwich, or better yet, I want to have a pastrami, you know what I mean, sandwich or something like, where the fuck am I going to get that? You know what I mean? Like, where, literally, you know, where am I going to get, you know, authentic apple pie with a slice of cheese melted on top? <laughs> you know, where am I going to get a lot of these things? I'm just not going to be able to get them. I can't even replicate them out here. I can try, but it's not even anything close. So, one of the things that I miss about Mexico, I mean America, about the United States of America is the food. Another, now, you know, another thing that I, I, I miss but I don't miss is literally the people. You know what I mean? Sure, you know, the people out here in Mexico are nicer and I, I, I love it out here. Everything's great. But hey, man, I'm not going to fucking lie to you. I do miss the people, you know what I mean? You know, again, you know, if, if you're bumping into a New Yorker and they're like, hey, get the fuck out the way. How's it going? You know, or, you know, <laughs> or if you're in L.A. and everyone's nice, but they're really not. You know, and, and it just doesn't matter. By the way, I fucking love L.A. I love New York. I love all these places. I, I, I love it, you know. Even though I've never really spent much time in New York, I'm from fucking the Miami. I'm from the West. I'm from the East Coast. And trust me. I know New Yorkers, all right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, so, um, you know what I'm saying, my guy? But anyway, but the point I'm saying is that, you know, this, today's episode is just randomness about the United States. And, um, you know, another thing that I really wanted to mention in today's episode is just the fact about, you know, sure, America has fucked over a lot of people, a lot of countries, and just, you know, just done a lot of damage when it comes to you know the world but this is not what today's episode is about today is you know we're celebrating America and all its Americanness and its greatness and its awesomeness because you know what even though America might be pretty shitty and sometimes you know in some cases you know there's a lot of things about America that not only are uniquely American but they have literally made the world a better place whether you like it or not you know one of the main things has been the culture I mean, you, you cannot argue about the fact that the United States, the last hundred years, you know, they've been killing it in culture. Sure, the United States is a very, very, very new country when it comes to the world stage. You know, we got places like China, Russia, you know, name any country in Europe, you know, it's been around for thousands of years. But, and America's only been around for what, like 250? Not even? So, maybe, I don't know. Don't quote me on the number. Maybe someone can write down how old America is. But the point is that, you know, America hasn't really been around that long. And when it comes to culture, again, we've really only been making an impact maybe the last 100, 150 years. I mean, for reals, you know, when it comes to, like, cowboys and uh, what else? Uh, and then that's it. You know what I mean? Just the cowboys and Indians thing, and then that's it. Even, even before that, you know, the barons and, and all that shit. But that wasn't really... You know, we weren't exporting anything of culture. It wasn't until the, the 20th century, you know, 1900 forward, where America really started making an um, impact on the world stage. Um, literally, um, you know, whether it was through literature, through music, through um, television and film, and so on and so forth. So, again, you know, America has made such an impact, you know, when it comes to, when it, when it, when it comes to the, just the cultural aspect of it, that, you know, when I'm out here in Mexico, that's why one of the main things and the only thing I really miss is, is the food because the, the culture out here, you know, sure, every, this, you know, we're in Mexico and everything is strictly Mexican, just like when you go to a lot of the world, a lot of, a lot of places around the world and, you know, they're 1,000% Chinese, they're 1,000% whatever, you know, but at the end of the day, every single country is influenced by the United States of America. Even a country like Cuba, which is completely closed off from the rest of the world. America's culture, 
um, has been be beyond crazy penetrating. I mean, seriously. No, I thought that was the bread guy. I was about to shut you guys off for a minute to get some bread. But no, that would have been wrong because today's America's episode and how dare I get some yummy, delicious, yummy, sweet bread for, you know, 25 cents off some random guy on the street. And This is America, man. You know, here we have to buy it at a really expensive place that has rules and regulations. And if some guy tries to sell me that at the door, the police will probably arrest him. Again, positive, positive. All right, so the culture. So again, you know, when it comes to like, let's say music, I mean, look at the look at the the humongous impact that that, it, that the United States has made on music. You know, right now, you know, sure, rock is dead in the U.S., but if you listen to music anywhere else in the world, rock is not dead. Rock is alive and kicking. Music, music is alive and kicking. And uh, again, you know, we're constantly, you know, influencing with everything in the music world and the music industry. We just are. I mean, right now, you know, the U.S. leads the pack, you know, when it comes to hip hop, when it comes to, you know, a lot of fucking music out there, you know, a lot of influential music. And sure, you know, you know, hip hop might not be the greatest right now. I, I'm all about, you know, our, you know, hip hop and, and you know, all that uh, rap music that the kids listen to. But hey, you know, I'm from the streets. I've been listening to fucking, you know, rap music, you know, for the very longest time. Again, I'm calling it rap music. I don't even know who the fuck calls it rap anymore. But anyways. You know, I used to listen to fucking Sugar Hill Gang and all that shit. But again, you know, nowadays, you know, no matter what kind of music you listen to, even some reggaeton or whatever kind of music, you know, is out there, um, you know, it's influenced by hip hop and influenced by urban beats and influenced by all that. Look at film. Look at Hollywood. Look at the, you know, look at that industry, how it shaped culture. Sure, sure, I know a lot of it is propaganda and all that stuff. Again, starting to stay positive here. I'm trying to stay positive. But the main... <laughs> It's kind of hard sometimes, I know. But the main thing is that Hollywood has been a major, 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 you know, cultural, you know, influencer all around the world. Bro, get out of here, you fucking truck. Fucking taking forever here, making all that noise. You know, hey, you know, where, where's the cops, you know, to arrest the garbage man for making too much noise when you need him? Again, just trying to stay positive. So, by the way, so, and that's another thing, too, that I miss, you know, one of the things about America that I actually miss is the fact that we used to be able to fucking make fun of ourselves and, you know, and laugh and poke at ourselves, and, you know, that's something that's not, you know, part of our culture anymore, but, you know, that thing's changing and we're, you know, pushing back and, uh, making fun of ourselves and com comedy is making a huge impact and a huge change and it's actually helping, uh, push all this censorship bull crap you know, out the door because, you know, again, most people have had it and uh, we use the avenue, you know, the, the, yeah, the actual avenue, the actual um, method of comedy in order to break through to the other side. Speaking of which, comedy, stand-up comedy. Sure, comedy and laughter has been around for a very long time, but, you know, again, right now, you know, stand-up comedy is something that's very strictly, uniquely American. You, you know, you you know, United States of America, and uh, you know now all of a sudden, uh, with all this exposure that you know stand-up comedy has had in the in the World Wide Web and all this other stuff, again now we see stand-up comedy in places like India, like Brazil, and other and, on, and other parts of the world where we never thought in a million years that something like that could exist. All right, sorry, just making just uh, oh, it's getting dark. Make it make, let's get a little bright in here. All right, so. You know, another thing, you know, another thing, you know, that I just, you know, that is strictly American. All right, hold on a second. Mm -mm -mm. Another thing that is strictly 100% American is the fact that we, for the longest time, led the world in innovation. I mean, I can go on and on with all, with all the inventions that the United States has been able to create, but, you know, sure. You know, um, we all know for a fact, you know what I mean, that the last hundred years, a little bit of, you know, about a little over a hundred years, you know, remember, we're knocking on 2020's door. So let's just say a, a 125 years, but literally for like the last 125 years, you know, the U.S. has led the world in innovation. And uh, sure, the U.S. did not invent the car, but the U.S. did invent the conveyor belt and the assembly line uh, by, you know, some guy named Mr. Henry Ford. and. You know, again, because of that, everybody has a motherfucking car. Um, 
And the same thing goes for so many technologies, you know. Um, some of them, most of them, have been homegrown and, and grown here, but we all know that no matter what the technology is, whether it was created here in the U.S. or created outside of the U.S., the U.S. has been the one that has pushed it to the masses, no matter what it is. You know, right now, the main technology that it's pushing, no matter what, no matter how you want to spin it, no matter how you like it, is, is cryptocurrency. You know, right now, the U.S. is literally the one that's pushing all this cryptocurrency all around the world. And basically, it's because of greed, but it doesn't fucking matter. You know, literally, all the trading and a lot of, a lot of the, you know, talk, you know, a lot of the whatever, you know, it comes from the U.S. Even though, you know, places like Venezuela, places like India, places all over the world are actually using these cryptocurrencies. But for whatever reason, it's all about the U.S. that's really bringing up the price and, and bringing up all this infrastructure, whether it's people on YouTube talking about this stuff or websites or whatever you know what i mean like apps you name it a lot of the innovation a lot of the everything is coming from the u.s sure sure you know a lot of it is coming from around the world but it's really the u.s is pushing it and that can go you know along the lines of pretty much anything you know whether it's something like freaking porno or something like you know the iphone or you know again we go back to music we go back to you know pretty much a lot of things Okay, so like I so you know, regardless, the U.S. has been a very influential, you know, being when it comes to the world stage. I mean, literally, you know, no matter where you go in the world, America and American culture is 100% represented. You know, whether it's Coca-Cola or IBM, it's represented. It's there. It's made an impact. It's changing. You know, it's changing the cultures of other parts of the of, of other countries around the world. So again, just like in Mexico, why I keep saying that, you know, the only thing I really miss is the food because, well, in Mexico, you know, American culture is part of their culture. You know, Mexico is Mexico, but again, I can just go to the north of the city and I'm in just like in any other U.S. city. We got the mall. We got the mall rats. You know, we got, we got everything. We got it all here. You know, and again, just like you go to any other parts of the world, you know, but let's just stick to Mexico here for one quick second. It's like, you know, they got Mexican rock music, literally, and it's just as good or better than our own rock. All right, all right, it's not as good as, you know, you know, Nirvana or The Doors or Jimi Hendrix or, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And, you know, just along the lines of just so many other things, you know what I mean? Like, again, I recently discovered that all of a sudden now Mexico has wine and really good wine. And, and so on and so forth. You know, there's just so many things that we can talk about. Um, again, not just here, but, you know, whiskey. You know, the best whiskey. First of all, whiskey is 100, bourbon, all that shit is 100% American, you know? And um, you're, I know, I know that, uh, you know, England and Ireland and all those places, they got scotch, they got whiskey over there and stuff like that. But again, you know what I mean? When we're talking Jack Daniels, when we're talking a lot of that stuff, you know, hey, the United States started perfecting it. But hey, you know, as, as, as we made it American, all of a sudden now, you know, you go to Japan and Japan makes the best whiskey. You know, I'm gonna stop talking about whiskey because I got a feeling that that's not American. <laughs> but what the fuck do I know? But you know what is American? Talking shit, okay? And not just talking shit, but being, you know, 100% confident in a lot of things. You know, being, you know, um, you know, so again, so confident in, in our awesomeness that we become blind and stupid to it, okay? And again, I can I can 100% like relate to that because I'm Cuban and Cubans are just the same exact way. So it doesn't matter if the United States of America is gonna be, you know, at, at the height of awesomeness or at the bottom of awesomeness. That's always gonna be strictly 100% American. And uh, I think I'm gonna end it there. But before I end it there, I just wanted to finish my thought, you know, but about the whole Cuba thing. Because again, look at Cuba, it's really poor, but yet they're 100% confident. You ask any Cuban, you know, Cubans are the best, we're the best, number one, blah, 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 sucker balls. And America is always going to be that way, no matter what. And yeah, sure, I know a lot of countries have pride in their countries and pride in everything they do. Again, I'm in Mexico and I was surprised as to how, you know, awesome, you know, I mean, as to how proud they are to be Mexican. You know, it, sh it should have been obvious. But again, there's nothing like an like American and, and, and American culture and America a miracle. All right. And, um, and I, again, yeah, now let's, now let's finish it because that that's the great point that I want to make. No matter what the hell happens going forward, 
All right, no matter if the great empire falls, which it will, no matter, you know, when, you know, no matter when the dollar falls, which it will, no matter when all these things fucking happen, America's still gonna be America. And I talked about this many, many fucking times before that even though the dollar is gonna fall, even though the, 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 the empire is gonna fall and all these things are gonna fall, you know what? America, in its past, many times before, we've come from all the way last place or close to last place to all the way to first. And I really, really do think that that's gonna happen again. It just is, okay? Because again, I study the world, I study all kinds of shit, and you know, right now with China, you know, China could be a huge threat, but they're not, they're not us. They're not us, okay? They're just not us, you know what I mean? And I don't know what else to say, except they're not us, you know what I mean? Anyone that's an American, no matter what your fucking background, whether you're Mexican or Cuban or Irish or where, or Japanese, being American is just being American. You know, there's just nothing like it. And that's the thing, you know? I think that what's gonna happen coming forward is that, yeah, the United States is gonna get punched in the gut and we're gonna be down for the count and we're gonna have our Rocky fucking moment, meaning that we're gonna be down in the gutter. But just like Rocky, we're gonna get up and we're gonna fucking win that championship and we're gonna fucking be number one yet again. All right, because we just are. And you know, no matter what, you know, the world is awesome and all these other countries are awesome as fuck, but man, you know, the, the world also loves how awesome America is and they love that whole American culture thing. And that's why I compare the US and a lot of people compare the US to the Roman Empire because the Roman Empire was exactly that. You know, even though the Roman Empire finally fell, it, it took a long ass time and it fell many times and rose many times and fell many times before it finally died. And I think that that's what's going to happen to the U.S. No matter what. So, again, no matter no matter who you are out there, and especially if you're American, you better be proud to be American, guys. Because I'm going to tell you what, America ain't going nowhere. And uh, we might as well celebrate America, the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right? Because, hey, no matter what, you know, like the saying goes, you, you can choose your friends, but you sure as hell can't choose your family. And, uh, yeah, this is the family I was born into. So, hell yeah. Man, I can't wait for football season to start. Go Dolphins! I hope they're good this year. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I fucking love you guys. You guys are the best. I want to give a shout-out to all my patrons. I want to give a shout-out to everyone out there who's always dropping, you know, um, all kinds of little, you know, donations here and there, helping me and Lambo, you know, stay out here in Mexico as a Amer representing America and uh, and that's it you guys I, I'm gonna cut this short because I know you guys have barbecues to get to and uh, 4th of July celebrations to to attend and all that good stuff uh, probably you probably got to go to work I hope you guys don't have to go, go to work I really do hope you guys get to have some fun and uh, and enjoy today and enjoy your weekend because you already know what's coming man it's a long ass freaking 4th of July weekend super long league weekend and I really hope that all you guys get to enjoy it to its fullest so with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share. Follow me on all the social medias. And last but not least, enjoy your 4th of July. Even if you're just eating apple pie by yourself at fucking Denny's. Hey, at the very least, get a fucking sparkler and put it on top of it, all right? And have a few shots of whiskey. <laughs> Love you guys. Have a great one. And I'll see you guys manana. Peace. Today, we're gonna to be talking about America. Well, basically, because it's the 4th of July. Today, today, we're gonna to be talking about America. That's right. It's because of, it's. Today, we're gonna to be talking about America. That's right. Well, it is the 4th of July after all. Might as well make an episode talking about how awesome my home country really, really is. If you don't believe me, stay tuned for more.